people all over the country are on the verge of being kicked out of their homes because they can't afford the property taxes. In this video, we're gonna learn about a state that's proposing completely eliminating property taxes. We're also gonna hear about another state with some property tax reforms that actually shocked me. So make sure you stay until the end so you can check that out. But first, I need you to hit that subscribe button. If you wanna get better at real estate investing, you have to follow this channel. Also, make sure you go to the pinned comment down below in this video for a free training that you can watch if you're interested in investing out of state. First, let's get some background on the property tax cuts that have already taken place in Texas and also hear from a single mother who's been struggling with property taxes. The words property tax. How can I manage this? Are daunting yeah. for Deborah Jones Massey. Single, single income and, um, yeah, single parent. She's lived in her home for 18 years. Um, I've been a homeowner in North Richland Hills um, since 2005, and my taxes have, have now exceeded doubling. Deborah is ready for a property tax cut, and one may be coming out of the state capitol. The Texas Senate and House agreed on an $18 billion property tax cut legislation. These are the highlights. Over $12 billion would reduce the school property tax rate. Homestead exemption would increase to 100000 A 20% circuit breaker would be given to non-homestead properties valued at $5 million or less. There would be savings on the franchise tax for small businesses and newly elected positions would be created on local appraisal boards. So her taxes have more than doubled since 2005, which doesn't surprise me, but I can guarantee that her wages probably haven't increased that much since that time. I really wish more states followed Texas and did their best to reduce the amount of property taxes that homeowners need to pay. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you know that many people all over the country are suffering specifically because of property taxes and in many places they're just going up like crazy and folks cannot afford it. And me personally, I think it's actually a good thing that schools are getting less money from property taxes. And as we go on in this video, it's going to make sense why I'm saying that. So it's very important for you to understand the significance of a homestead exemption. So let's check this out. Of all these highlights, there is one that will impact 5.7 million homeowners. I think first and foremost, the component of the new new legislation that increases the homestead exemption to $100,000 is going to provide the most substantial permanent relief. Chandler Crouch, a realtor and property uh, tax expert. Let me do that math for you real quick. He gives an example of a home valued at $300,000 that qualifies for homestead exemption. I took $300,000 and then you subtract uh, $100,000 and you get 200,000, obviously. If the school district property tax rate is around 1.3%. By converting to a percentage and then you click equals and you get $2,600. That would be $780 less than the current homestead exemption, meaning homeowners would save money. I just hope that, you know, that's done, you know, as soon as possible and in even considering maybe more of a homestead increase. For Deborah, it can't come soon enough. And perhaps when it does, it may not be quite enough. But at this point, for her, anything will help. Let's be honest, in this economy, every penny counts. So I'm sure that she's very appreciative that her property taxes were reduced. One thing to keep in mind is that in 2023, the Texas legislature approved an $18 billion package of property tax cuts, which is pretty significant. Just to make sure we're on the same page, here is exactly what a homestead exemption is. A homestead is generally the house and land used as the owner's principal residence on January 1st of the tax year. Homestead exemptions reduce the appraised value of your home and as a result, lower your property taxes. If you're a homeowner and you haven't looked into the homestead exemption in your state, I definitely encourage you to look into it. A simple Google search can get you started on the right path to get the information for your state. Now let's learn what it'll take for Texas to fully eliminate property taxes. Well, property taxes were the issue that kept lawmakers stuck here for months after session last year. They ended up spending about $18 billion in order to give you a tax break. But this year, the question is what's next? Some say the only acceptable tax rate is zero, but the senators tasked with figuring that out said that math just isn't working. Property taxes are not just a financial burden, they are fundamentally immoral. Frustration on full display Wednesday as senators grapple with property taxes once again. Cut those property taxes until we get rid of the school property tax right here in the state of Texas. Eliminating all property taxes would cost more than $81 billion a year. The state only raises about $47 billion for discretionary spending every year. Senators say 
The goal of no property taxes is a non-starter. To get $81 billion, you just don't do that with a snap of your finger. You'd have to turn the sales tax rate up to 22 cents, and that's well over twice higher than anybody else in the country. I gotta say, shout out to the governor for being a proponent of cutting property taxes. That's something that I'm not used to seeing, and I'm surprised and I'm impressed. I can't lie though, it is crazy that it would take $81 billion to eliminate property taxes. So you let me know in the comments what you think. Would you rather keep the sales tax at 6% or have it increased to 22% in order to eliminate property taxes? Now, in my opinion, I think to an extent you can control what you buy, right? But but you cannot really control the property taxes you're being charged and all these things. That's just my opinion, but I'm curious to know what you think. Now, realistically, they may not be able to cut the property taxes altogether, but I believe they should do their best and that they will do their best to reduce it as much as possible. So there are some more things that would need to take place in order to fully eliminate property taxes in Texas. And it's very important that we understand this fully. All the money put on higher ed, all the money in public ed, all the money for Medicaid, all the money for mental health, um, human trafficking, all the issues, things that the state has made priorities, we would not have the funding for. Is that correct? Senators don't think anyone yeah, will take that it. deal either. So for now, the plan for property taxes is to continue putting billions of dollars into buying down rates and increasing homestead exemptions. We have to do that over and over again every two years. I think the prudent way to move forward is to take our surpluses and dedicate a portion of, the, of those to continuing to lessen the burden on a homeowner and small businesses. So I definitely think it's smart to allocate the surpluses to reducing property taxes. Personally, I think the whole surplus should go to reducing property taxes. But the fact that they even said that, I think is a great thing. In this economy, it's hard for a lot of people. So I'm sure these property tax cuts for homeowners would really help. And again, I can respect the effort. I'm not used to the powers that be and the higher ups in the government and stuff really caring about the everyday person. So this is actually kind of refreshing. And in my opinion, I think every state who is not doing something like this should take some notes. But how are the property taxes and the sales tax where you are? Let me know in the comments if it's crazy, if it's stable, if you don't know. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. So the next state completely shocked me because they are proposing property tax benefits for owners and even for tenants. Well, Angela and Andrew, under the bills, eligible homeowners would get an income tax credit or rebate if their property taxes are more than 5% of their income. It would also apply to renters for the portion of their rent attributable to property taxes. The primary sponsors of the House version say Ohio needs property tax relief now. Our property taxes are way too high for way too many people. That's why Democratic State Representative Dunny Isaacson introduced House Bill 645 along with Republican Representative Thomas Hall. Isaacson says the measure could potentially help hundreds of thousands of Ohioans. Not only are property tax payers, homeowners, getting relief, but also when landlords are passing on the increases, to their renters that their tenants are also getting some relief. So I want to pause right there because one thing that's misunderstood these days is the cost that landlords have. Unfortunately, when costs like insurance and property taxes go up, in many cases, part of that is passed on to tenants. For some landlords, that is the only way to stay profitable is to pass on that cost. So I think it's good that tenants could receive some relief in the form of taxes. I'm actually a landlord in Ohio, and I think this is awesome. And I hope it goes through because I think it'll be great for my tenants to get some relief as well. So one question I have about this is I'm not sure how they will calculate the percentage of a tenant's rent that is attributed to property taxes. It wasn't clear how they're going to do that, but I'm very curious what that calculation will look like in practice. Now let's learn about how exactly this would apply to homeowners based on their income. The bill would provide an income tax credit or rebate for homeowners and renters whose property taxes or a portion of their rent are more than 5% of their income. A household making $60,000 or less would be eligible for a credit or rebate up to $1,000. The amount of relief falls as income increases. A household at the highest eligible income level of $100,000 would get a credit or rebate of $200. The Senate companion bill differs in that it would provide credits only for households making up to 60 k
Any action or activity that the General Assembly can take that is going to allow people to be able to maintain and stay in the neighborhood they want, we're very supportive. Franklin County Auditor Michael Stinziano oversees the county's property tax assistance program. It provides one-time payments for seniors and those with disabilities struggling to pay property taxes. We continue to hear... Uh, that kitchen table issue of not wanting to be property taxed out of their neighborhood. Representative Isaacson says other states already have similar tax relief measures in place. He says this bill is based on a law in Michigan. People were being taxed out of their homes yesterday, today, tomorrow. Uh, and so we are trying to do more uh, on this issue. Overall, I think this is a step in the right direction, and I do hope that it goes through. But you let me know what you think. Is Ohio proposing enough? Is there more that they should be doing in terms of property tax relief and property tax reform for homeowners? Again, I'm very surprised that the tenants are included, but I think it's a great thing. I also think it's great that there is support already for seniors and those with disabilities who are struggling with property taxes. And if you've watched any of my videos before, I've spoken extensively about the fact that seniors are being put in positions where they can't afford their property taxes, insurance, or special assessments, HOA fees, many of these things going up for various seniors throughout the entire country. And it should never be like that. A senior should never have to experience that in the last Latter stages of their life. They should be able to relax and enjoy the fruits of their labor. So now that you know about states that want to eliminate property taxes, I want you to learn about why exactly you should not buy a condo in Florida. Check out this video right here.